I come from a family that is not particularly operatic in background, but when I was a little girl, I heard my mother speak of Risa Stevens. And that was sort of because she was a, a, a movie icon, you know, from the 40s, and that was my mother's era as well. And I remember thinking, but she's an opera singer, how can she be in movies? And then I got a hold of some of the videos, and I thought, this is the real deal. You know, there were a lot of singers during those times who, who made movies, but nobody like her. Nobody with the real, legitimate, operatically trained, full-throated, full-throttled voice and bringing it to film in such amazing portrayals and such real, honest portrayals on film. You know, Risa Stevens turned mezzos into superstars. We're all grateful those of us who, you know, have endeavored to follow the mezzo path. Um, she just, I mean, the combination of the beauty, the voice, the artistic integrity, the dramatic integrity, the courage, the commitment. You know, I, I, I recently was looking at, at a video of the card scene from Carmen and the way that she reads the cards and then just physically, and this is on film, and she pulls herself up to read what they say. And just that, that subtle physicality, but it comes from such a real place, such a deep place. I mean, you don't, you don't have the impression that a director said, OK, now sit up straight to read that, that it just was in her. And the way that she used her body in a, in a time when, when opera acting was different than it is now, but she's very contemporary in the way that she uses her body to express the music, the text, the character. And, you know, she's, she's fearless in, in clutching and, and bending into shapes, you know, the way that, that we sort of are, are taught to do now. But the way that she sort of had it so instinctively, even at that time, is pretty remarkable. And, and she's really, she's a benchmark sort of one of the first operatic actresses who, for me, brought such truth to everything that she did. You know, unfortunately, I never had the opportunity to hear her sing live. But the film that I've seen um, and the photographs, Octavian photographs, to st the, the nobility and the beauty and the figure and the voice to bring to a role like Octavian, which is, of course, you know, where I relate. It's astonishing and such an inspiration. I've, I've met Miss Stevens a few times at the Metropolitan Opera um, at, at performances when I was in the audience and she was in the audience and, and you know, we would encounter each other. And, and uh, I was very fortunate to receive, as a gift from someone who is also a great fan of hers, a, a fan letter. Uh, this woman wrote a fan letter to Risa Stevens in the 60s, in 1960. And Miss Stevens answered it. And the woman who was in possession of that letter has passed it on to me because it was a fan letter for her performance of Octavian at the Met. And Miss Stevens very graciously answered it on a typewriter and sent it to this woman who lives in Houston. And the woman was so touched and wanted from one great Octavian, she thought she was passing it on to me. And I was very touched to receive that, a, a hand-typed letter from Risa Stevens. The color of this voice, I mean, she could, she, she could do anything with it, you know? It was, it was light and comical enough to, to go on film in a, in a light-hearted romantic comedy on film. And then it was smoky and dark and smoldering enough to sing the most haunting Carmen you can imagine. The Dalila of such sensual, exquisite nobility. The Octavian of, of a different color, you know, that, that, that boyish timbre. I mean, there's, there's nothing she can do. And, and what particularly strikes me overall is just the, the warmth, the warm roundness 
of the sound. And it just seems so even. Everything seems so easy <laughs> for her. I'm envious of that. <laughs> It was a golden, truly golden age. It was a time when, when everything mattered a lot. And to, to be a, you know, an opera singer and be part of the public culture, the culture across the board, mm -hmm. in films, on television, you know, and it wasn't an anomaly. It was just something that was normal and appreciated. And, and celebrated and that people knew about, you know? Can you imagine being a part of that? When opera is more of a part of everyday life than just being the background on a spaghetti commercial.